Hi, my name's Trevor. I'm the author of Le Mourner Engine, a light 3D game engine featuring a software renderer which you just saw running. Today I'd like to talk about the engine's thread pool. I wrote a custom thread pool that accepts a list of jobs and dispatches them to worker threads. The job system supports the notion of job dependencies. We'll examine the job system later, but let's first look at the thread pool. The broad idea is to have a number of worker threads contained in a system that has them fetch jobs off a job queue until that queue is empty and then wait or sleep where sleeping implies relinquishing the threads back to the operating system in some fashion. The emptying of the job queue signals a separate thread whose job it is to replenish the job queue, after which it signals the worker threads that the queue is full and sleeps itself. This is the classic producer-consumer model, where the producer is a thread that fills the job queue, in our case our master thread, and the consumers are our worker threads contained in the thread pool. The threads will need exclusive access to the job data when they read or write a job, so we need the notion of a thread acquiring a lock on the job queue prior to accessing it, and releasing that lock when done. We want the time the thread holds the lock to be as short as possible to minimize contention. We are operating in a Windows environment, so we use critical sections as our exclusive locks and condition variables as our means of signaling between producer and consumer threads. Now let's look at our thread pool structure. We set an upper limit on the number of threads in our pool, but the actual number is discovered at runtime by querying the processor info information. We have an array of thread handles uh, condition variables for both the producer and consumer, and a single critical section that will gate access to the job queue data. Let's look at the initialization of that thread pool data. There we go. We initialize our condition variables and critical sections, do some initialization relating to the running of the job queue, and loop over the worker threads and create them. The parameters we pass in are an ID to identify the thread and a pointer to the thread pool structure. The main worker thread function that is called uh, is here, the very dryly named main loop. Uh, this is the function the worker threads execute as they are created. So the worker threads uh, enter this uh, while loop which they will iterate over until broken out uh, by this if statement, uh, which will be true only when the user has exited the program. At this stage, uh, only note the following, that we have these bookends for entering and leaving the critical section within which uh, the worker thread can access the job queue data and within which it will both uh, sleep uh, and wake depending on whether these conditions are true. The sleep is wrapped in a while loop to guard against spurious wakes. Uh, when the worker threads are created and first enter this loop, the job queue will of course be empty so they will straight away sleep. To understand the remainder of the code we need to talk about the job system. A job consists of the following elements. We have a pointer to the function to be executed pointer to a structure containing parameters to that function, a dependency counter indicating how many jobs this job must wait on before it can be run, and a permission list indicating which jobs are dependent on this job's completion. Now, jobs with dependencies are placed in a job pending queue. Jobs with no dependencies go in a job ready queue. And when a worker thread finishes processing a job, it adds it to the job complete queue. The master thread will clear the job complete queue and decrement the dependency counters of the relevant jobs in the job pending queue. So when a, pendi uh, when a pending job's dependency counter reaches zero, it can be added to the jobs ready queue. The queues are implemented as virtualized circular buffers Note that jobs exist only uh, explicitly uh, in the jobs pending queue. In the other queues, they are referred to via an ID that is simply an index into the pending array. So let's return to our worker thread code. 
we see uh, a worker thread wakes in its critical section, uh, takes a job from the job ready queue, uh, exits the critical section, and executes the job. When it's done, it re enters the critical section, uh, adds the job to the finished job queue signals the producer thread that there is a finished job to process and uh, either goes on to select another job or sleeps if there are no more jobs. Now let's look at the master thread code. The process of adding jobs to the job system starts by setting the dependency counters which will be decremented as finished jobs are processed. We then enter our job loop, uh, which will run until the jobs are completed. We process the completed job queue, decrementing the dependency counters of pending jobs in the permission lists of each completed job. We then fill the ready queue uh, with any jobs that now have no dependencies and can be run. We then uh, enter the critical section and add as many ready jobs as we can to the local job queue. Signal the thread pool consumers that there are available jobs and sleep. The master thread is signaled when there are finished jobs to process. It wakes it in its critical section, takes a copy of finished jobs, exits the critical section and proceeds. So using this job system, I can characterize an entire game frame as a single large submission to the thread pool, expressed as a network of interdependent jobs. This certainly isn't to say that those dependencies are highly optimized. In fact, large sections of game logic still run serially due to the difficult nature of parallelizing such work, but it is all still expressed using the same scheme. Rendering, dynamic light map generation, and collision processes are all highly parallelized. This source file contains all the jobs that make up the game frame. It's a monolithic array of jobs with functions and parameters hard coded, broadly divided up into systems such as game logic, collision, rendering, etc. It's effective but a bit inflexible, given uh, it's all built out at compile time. What I'd like going forward is a way of dynamically creating jobs and adding them to the thread pool at runtime. Well, that concludes our look at the thread pool and job system. Be sure to check out my code reviews of other game engine systems, visit my website, and follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching.